Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about capture the flag or CTFs, whether they're good, bad and how to get started if you're interested. I've spent quite a lot of years doing these on and off and for me I think they helped a lot in terms of my technical development and troubleshooting skills but they're not for everybody and definitely not a requirement. But if you are interested then there are some benefits to be had. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. So first up, what's the point? Why bother with Capture the Flag at all? Well, there are a number of reasons why I think Capture the Flags are great. They develop our troubleshooting skills, it helps you learn new things about underlying technologies that you're working with, and they enable you to learn in an engaging and fun way, and also usually in a safe environment. And finally, if you're a PvP kind of person, they can be quite competitive too. This can be a good source of motivation for some people. A big part of application security is really getting to grips with how applications respond and behave in unusual circumstances. And during CTFs, you'll encounter a lot of this, which will improve your hacking intuition as well as your ability to solve complex problems. Sound good? Well, how do we even get started? Well, realistically, with the right attitude, you can just dive into beginner level CTFs and learn as you go. There's literally nothing wrong with that, and we'll take a look at some beginner CTFs later that you can jump straight into so that you know where to go. But if you're the kind of person who likes to be prepared, then I'd recommend having some basic scripting skills, something like Python is fine, and know how to use some common tools like Burp Suite, Wireshark, and Nmap. And these are pretty helpful when you're coming up against challenges. And probably one tool that I couldn't live without that I use on almost every CTF is cyberchef.io. In fact, let's take a quick look at Cyberchef right now. All right, so here we are at our VM and I'm just going to open up my browser and come over to cyberchef.io. And it takes a second to load and here we are at the application. So first up, when you're dealing with CTFs, especially web challenges, you'll see a lot of things in base64 or somehow base encoded. So if we just have some text, let's say, please like and subscribe. And if we want to convert this to base64, we just drag in the to base64. And it's quite common in CTFs to also encode things multiple times. So if you want to do it twice, for example, or three times, we can stack things too. And then if we have this, for example, let's say we were given this string and we want to decode it, we can put it in here, switch this off and do from base64 and here we can easily decode as well. So very basic encoding, decoding, but this is something that you have to do a lot of when you're dealing with CTF challenges. And if you're feeling brave and want to start diving into the crypto challenges, something that you will see is, please like and subscribe, is the Caesar cipher. So this is a very basic cipher where all of the characters are shifted by three, and it's also known as uh, rot as well. So here we have rot 13, but we can change this to three, for example. So P becomes S, L becomes O, and once again, we can reverse this as well by changing our inputs and outputs and the amount of characters we want to do this by. And finally, I'm going to paste this one in because uh, you don't want to sit here and watch me typing things out for 20 minutes, but we can also do things like regex. So if we just search for regex and here, what I want to do is I want to match all of the IP addresses pop this in and as you can see, we can easily see all of the IP addresses in the text. And if we want to list them, we can just come down here, list matches, and here we have a nice list. So if you're working with big blocks of text or you want to sift through some data very quickly and you don't want to write scripts to do it, then cyberchef.io has your back and you're good to go. What I'd recommend is that you give each category a try so try web, reversing, crypto, forensics, everything except stego because, I don't know, only strange people like steganography. But jokes aside, do what you find interesting and don't hesitate to collaborate, even if it's in a category that you're not that familiar with or that you don't usually participate in. A new perspective on a challenge can make the difference between being really close to solving it and actually getting the points. 
If you're already a CTF player, by the way, and you want to share some of your key tools that get you through time after time, then let us know down in the comments below. Sharing is, of course, caring. And it's always good to hear about what the wider community is using. So for beginner-friendly CTFs, you want to build some confidence and a good place to start is with some solo challenges. I'm a big fan of Over the Wire, Picto CTF, and RootMe. I go back quite a long way with RootMe, so it's pretty nostalgic whenever I go back and visit it. And some of the challenges are really, really excellent. So here we are at RootMe, and as you can see, you can sign up a free account, and all you need to do is sign up a visitor access, and you can train for free on various exercises. You can see solutions posted by other members, and you can contribute as well. And as we scroll down, you can see that there are 536 challenges. This is a lot of challenges, um, 171 virtual environments, and more than 5,000 solutions. And this goes back to having multiple solutions for a given problem or multiple ways of approaching a different situation. It's always worth exploring how other people solved a problem and not just assuming that your solution is the best one. We're always open to learning new things and a different approach might apply in a different situation. Quite a lot of these challenges as well are pretty fundamental in terms of web hacking and building skills that allow you to interact with technology efficiently and troubleshoot and find issues and then go and exploit them. So it's a great website and I highly recommend you give it a try. At first though, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed and really what you want to do is give a challenge a go, set yourself a timer, let's say 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and if you're stuck by the end of that time and you've made no meaningful progress, then take a look at a write-up or a hint or get some help from somebody else and then carry on. This is going to help you improve your persistence and troubleshooting skills, but not let you waste a whole day on a single problem. And once you're ready to dive in, CTF time is probably the best place to find upcoming events, team information, and much, much more. And probably the best advice I can give you, which I should leave to the end because, you know, it's a YouTube video and watch time and all that, but hey, is that once you've done a CTF, read all of the write-ups and find out what you missed. Even the challenges you solved, there might be different ways to solve it, easier ways to solve it, or alternative solutions. More often than not, if you didn't manage to solve it, it's just because it's something that you haven't seen before. And after a while, you'll start to pick up patterns, common challenges, and even though the scenario might be a little bit different, you'll still be able to solve that challenge. And for our final section, we're going to talk about continuous learning. There are some things we can do to help us stay motivated, and first up, if you can find some like-minded people or a Discord community that regularly does CTF challenges, then you're much more likely to keep up in the long run. So to wrap up, here are the key points. Get the fundamentals down, build both some scripting skills and also get used to using basic tools. Take on some beginner CTF challenges, read lots and lots of write-ups and use them to help you solve challenges that you're stuck on. And if you can, seek out a group of like-minded people. Hopefully I'll see you on the scoreboard in some CTF competition at some point in the future. And that's it for this video. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have other tips to share for newcomers to CTF, let us know down in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.